dog food and DCM. There's a brand new study saying maybe there really is no link. Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. I'm having a brand new upcoming webinar, Top Natural Anti-Inflammatories and Painkillers in Dogs and Cats. Why Natural Pain Relief is Important. How to Avoid the Side Effects of the NSAIDs. Chronic Inflammation and Disease in Our Pets. Why this is important and most importantly, what you can do about it. The webinar is free. It's happening Tuesday, August 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. Exactly what I should be feeding my dog. Like, should it be kibble? Sure, other things I should be avoiding. Should it be peas? Especially when there was the first studies came out linking dog food and in particular certain ingredients, the legumes found in many of the grain-free dog foods to DCM, a type of heart disease. It's been a few years since the first study came out. The FDA closed their investigation. Approximately a thousand dogs were confirmed, at least according to them, to have diet-induced DCM, this type of heart disease linked to diet. Many of the dogs, they responded to this amino acid. It's called taurine. This is one of the primary amino acids that is needed for normal heart function. And if there's a deficiency for taurine, then the heart, it's going to be damaged. There's going to be some type of heart disease, such as DCM. But what's a little bit confusing is we know our dogs, they can actually manufacture taurine from some of the other amino acids. So if they have an adequate balanced diet, they should be able to make enough taurine. Regardless, there seem to be some type of dietary correlation we're seeing in breeds such as golden retrievers, which we'd never really seen it before. So we knew like something abnormal was happening, but there is never a clear conclusion. You know, it was a here's and there's never these specific gradients. If these are in this food, it's going to cause DCM. A recent study was just published. Different carbohydrate sources in dog foods supported overall health and cardiac function. I first saw this article posted by Dr. Karen Becker, so thank you to Dr. Becker. They start out the study by saying that DCM is the second most common heart disease in dogs. And in recent years, there's been a connection suggested between foods like these, grain-free dog foods, and DCM. So to do this study, they took a group of healthy dogs and they want to randomize them, so they chose them at random and they wanted to feed them four different types of dog foods. Number one, a grain-free diet like this with potatoes and peas. Number two, a grain-inclusive diet with peas and pea fiber. Number three, a grain-inclusive diet without peas or potatoes. And then number four, a grain-free diet with potatoes. So all these diets, they were considered complete and balanced and they wanted to assess after giving these dogs for 18 months, a year and a half, you know, exactly what impact did these have on cardiac function. Specifically, they were looking at the hearts and they're looking at cardiac function. Is the heart pumping? Is it functioning normally? And the other big thing they wanted to do is evaluate this. Look at the levels of taurine that gets the one amino acid which has been highlighted. If your dog is deficient in taurine, he can't absorb enough taurine, he's gonna have abnormal heart function can develop DCM. Another big key point, these dogs were fed the exact amount as was directed on the label according to the manufacturer's instructions. In terms of for them to be able to provide all the adequate nutrients, it meant for your dog, i.e. little 25 pound Tula, she's being fed that exact measured amount. Not a little bit less, not a little bit more. So what they found, you have the two broad groups of diets, you have the ones that were grain free, that you had the ones that were grain inclusive and for all four of those diets there was completely no different changes in cardiac function they all had normal levels of this normal levels of this taurine so over a year and a half these randomized groups of dogs fed these four different subtypes of diets two were grain free two were grain inclusive normal cardiac function and the conclusion that they say that the foods that were designed to provide similar nutritional profiles, they supported heart health in healthy adult dogs. They say this just highlights the importance of balanced, high quality nutrition. Meaning what, Dr. Jones? So then what happened? How is it that it seemed that a whole bunch of dogs were developing this heart disease 
after eating certain foods. Like clearly there's some nutritional link. Dr. Karen Becker suggested some of these foods, they're amino acid deficient. So the amino acids, they're the building blocks of animal protein. So if you're pretty skimpy on your poor quality food, you've got just enough, you know, amino acids, just enough protein there to pass like sort of the minimum base levels. Maybe you have acceptable levels of protein, but you don't have adequate level of amino acids. You don't have some of the other amino acids that may be needed to form taurine. You can have a dog that's taurine deficient. And as she says, it doesn't really matter where there's kibble, it's freeze dried, raw, homemade. Like you need adequate level, a balanced amino acid diet to ensure that your dog has normal heart health, heart function. That makes sense to me. The other big point that was made, including this came from Susan Thixton on The Truth About Pet Food, is that if you choose to feed less than is what's suggested on the label, it's possible then you're putting your dog into a nutritional deficiency. So say we've got a dog who's a little less active, say Tool is turned into a couch potato, she's starting to put on the pounds, I want to keep her in lean body condition. So I choose to feed her, say 25, 30% less. Seems like a good idea, eh? But then maybe in that point, I'm making her nutritionally deficient in some of these key amino acids that are needed. Maybe she's not going to have enough taurine. She can't make enough taurine because she doesn't have enough of the other amino acids that are needed. And then that really then, that could trigger the heart disease. I do want to add is I don't necessarily think these guys, peas, are really should be in dog food. Peas, when they're broken down, they contain high levels of things called phytates, which can affect nutrient absorption. And many veterinarians have talked about this. You're not gonna find your dog willingly walking in your garden consuming peas. Hmm. So in conclusion, like you're left with, like, what do I feed Dr. Jones? It was all grain free. The DCM scare came out. I got rid of the grain free. I went to this eh, questionable grain inclusive diet. Like do go back, do I stick with what I've had? Well, first and foremost, my first suggestion, regardless of what you're choosing to feed your dog, kibble A, kibble B, just feed less kibble. If your dog is eating a homemade diet that's primarily animal protein, he's gonna have so many more amino acids. He's gonna have a balanced amino acid profile as well as if he's eating raw, even a freeze dried raw. And if you're choosing to feed kibble, ensure that it's you know, a good quality food like these guys, you know, 85% primarily animal ingredients, right? You know, there's mostly animal protein in there. And if you're looking between two different bags, in my personal opinion, less to know of these is ideal. You want to be feeding your dog things that he's designed to break down and digest. If he can't break down and digest these things, potentially causing harm, like they really don't have any purpose to be in the diet. But if your dog's doing really well on a grain-free diet and it includes a few peas, such as this one does, so Tula is eating a small amount, but she's doing great on it. She's 14. I'm sticking with it. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Seekers, the update of DCM and dog food. Last but not least, don't forget about our new upcoming webinar, Top Natural Anti-Inflammatories and Painkillers for Dogs and Cats. I'm gonna be showing you all the natural and holistic anti-inflammatories, including the new emerging ones, which you can use at home to help your pets. Why you should be avoiding the NSAIDs, signs of NSAID toxicity. The key signs of pain in our pets that you need to know. Chronic inflammation, autoimmune disease. This is how you can help your dogs or cats at home. The webinar is free. It's happening Tuesday, August 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. Click up there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.